This week on the Computer Chronicles, how to set up a home network. We'll show you how to use the existing telephone wiring in your house to interconnect several computers. We'll look at a very simple, low-cost solution to setting up a second workstation in your home. Also, we'll look at wireless networking using Apple's new airport technology. And the home portal, a way to interconnect all the electronic devices in your house. Plus, my pick of the week, an amazing new computer peripheral that can turn your PC into a laboratory. It's all coming up next on the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is brought to you by RonDiamond.com, the oldies site on the internet. Music and memories from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, not just another jukebox. Additional support comes from the law offices of Ivan Hoffman, lawyering with integrity for internet law, copyright, trademark, and other intellectual property law. And by TechWeb for up-to-the-minute technology news. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Shafe. Most people who buy a computer these days already own one. In fact, it's not uncommon to find a house with three or more computers, a desktop for the kids, a desktop for the parents, and maybe also a laptop. But most households also only own one printer, one scanner, one ISP. That means it would make a lot of sense to connect all these computers and peripherals into one home network so you could share files, peripherals, the internet, even mess around with multiplayer games. There are several approaches to setting up a home network, and we're going to show you four different options. First of all, a solution from Netgear. It was just voted best of Comdex. And here from Netgear to show it to us is Devashis Pramanik. How are you? Fine, thanks, Stuart. Let's talk about what, we've got a lot of stuff going on here, so let's explain what the setup is. If I want to make a network at home using Netgear, what do I need to do? I have. I take it there's a card I'm going to put in my machine? Exactly. We actually have two products that you can use for your PCs. Yeah, let's just hold this up one at a time. So this is the card that we, uh, leave that for a yeah. second. So this is a card I'd put in, in my desktops? That's right. It's a PCI, PCI card. PCI card. And uh, you simply put it into a PCI slot. Of and any it's just got RG11 phone jacks. That's correct. So we're using... Is Standard phone lines in your house that normally runs from room to room that you use for your telephone service. Got it. Now, then what is this thing? This is a USB dongle. Same functionality, but this means you don't have to open up your PC. Um, and if I have a laptop, I can set it up on a laptop. Exactly. So you can bring your laptop home from a uh, corporate network. Same bit. So I have a little dongle or the card. All right, so I put that in the two machines now. What's the kind of software installation look like? Well, we try to make this very easy to install, take all of the uh, uh, network issues. They all say that, but... It okay, <laughs> I'll show you. Yeah. Uh, basically, this is the first screen you'll see during the installation okay. process. We'll ask you for your computer name. All right, name. so we've already set mine up, actually, so we're not really doing this. That's right. Uh, we're we're going to have to have a work group name. Okay. And then finally... It'll ask you for what drives What's you want to share. What's on the network and what are we going to share and so on. Exactly. And if we had a printer installed, it would ask you if you wanted to share that printer Got throughout it. the rest of the network. All right. Now let's talk about what we can actually do with this thing. Now we're using existing phone wiring, so that's that's sort of already in place. How many how many nodes could I actually get on my network using your stuff? Uh, you'll be able to have about 32 nodes, and that's more than enough for well, I would guess so. <laughs> I would hope so. All right, now one of the things we can, can we share one ISP, one internet connection, and be doing two different things at the same time? That's absolutely correct. All right, can we demonstrate that? Sure. Now, can uh, I take over my computer here? Yes, so you hand can. me that mouse. Uh, we're sharing a 56K connection to ISP. All right, so an let's ISP. see. So we're online right now. Let me open my browser here. All right. And let me actually uh, maximize mine. All right, so we're right now at the same place, but can we do surf two different sites simultaneously? Yes, we can. All right, why don't you go ahead and do something so else? I'm going to go to buy.com. I'm interested in my Christmas shopping right now. Okay. And uh, you should but be I'll continue to look on your Netgear uh, homepage here, here. Meantime, I'm at buy.com. So uh, we're, t we're doing two different things here, huh? Exactly. So you can yeah. share your ISP connections, whether it's 56K, uh, cable modem, DSL modem. Yeah. Uh, you'll be all set. All right, very cool. All right, so let me get rid of that now. And okay. now what about, first of all, what's the performances? I mean, how fast can we move well, stuff up? Well, this that? is uh, like Ethernet, 10 megabits per second. Okay. So without laying Ethernet wiring, you're using your standard phone wiring, you're getting 10 megabits. All right, speed. let's do a little demonstration. You have some multimedia stuff up here. For instance, I have some audio files on my machine. Right. You could actually access those audio files from your machine. That's correct. I'm going to pull up a real jukebox. Uh, we're going to pull over some MP3 files. I'm going to go right to the network, oops, excuse me, Okay. right to the network neighborhood, um, at which point our two PCs are here. I'm going to go to All right, start. so that's me. So you're going to access my hard drive. Correct. Go to the C drive. 
And then we have uh, my music stored okay, here. Okay, so pick a track. Pick a track there. There you go. All right, now while you're doing that, can I go to your hard drive and pull up some all other multimedia stuff? Sure, I've got right, a so video go, stored on I'll mine. go to my network neighborhood and uh, let's see what we've got here. <clears throat> all right, so I'll go to your machine and you have a video clip here and I'll launch that. That's right. Now while this is all going on, we can be uh, surfing the internet working on documents. Well, in fact, our internet connections are still up there. Right. I'm watching a James Bond movie off your hard drive. You're playing music off my hard drive. That's correct. Very cool. Yes. So, I mean, we could obviously do baby stuff like word processing and Excel Multiplayer and games. That. So you could have kids up in the uh, their bedrooms playing multiplayer games right. on the internet. What does this cost me to set this whole thing up? $69 per PC note. Our card uh, street all? price is about $69. Bucks. That's yeah. not bad. Yeah. Uh, and use my existing telephone wiring. Yes. In fact, you can use your phone service um, while you're sharing files and printers, if, of course, if you're sharing the internet, you'll yeah, be, sure, sure. Be okay, but when you're just things. using the network, you can also be using the telephone. That's right. All right. Finally, you have another thing over here. What about folks who have cable modems and DSL and that kind of stuff? Is that what this is meant for? That is what it's meant for. It's a uh, phone line to Ethernet bridge, and it allows um, people to share their cable modem or DSL modem throughout the rest of the house. So if they've paid for a broadband connection. You can now share that broadband around. That's and right. what's that little box called, that bridge? Uh, that's going to be about uh, $199. Yeah, not bad. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. All right, well, you may not perhaps need a big multi-node network in your home. Maybe all you need is a second workstation at home so you can share peripherals or share an ISP connection, files, applications, and so on. There is a very clever, low-cost solution for you. We're going to show you now called the Vega Buddy. And this is Bill Berdu of Vega Technologies. Uh, and let's talk about what this system here, because this, this is rather interesting. Uh, this is just creating a second workstation without really having a workstation. Is that what's happening? Yes, basically, two people are using one computer at the same time. All right. I, I saw a quote of yours in a Fortune magazine article that said, you've set network computing back 30 years. Most technology guys don't want to say that. What do you mean? Well, actually, uh, a lot of people remember the uh, mainframes right? in businesses, and uh, there were dumb terminals all around the office on, on almost every desk. And those dumb terminals, uh, they, they weren't computers. They were basically right. a monitor, keyboard, and mouse. So that's your theory. You've got this big Pentium sitting over there, basically not doing a heck of a lot most of the time. Exactly. If, and why not have it run a couple other stations? Exactly. If you, if you have a Pentium processor in your computer and you only have one user, you are basically wasting, wasting the power that you've got. Correct. Uh -huh. All right, now we have, a, so this is the card you would buy to install Yes. In your, in your existing PC. Yes. The product comes with hardware and software. And uh, the card that you install in your PC is a standard PCI card. It's got its own video. It's also got support for a uh, keyboard and a mouse. Okay. So basically it has everything I need except the CPU, which I'm borrowing from. Which my you're user. borrowing from the one. All right. Computer. And then this is, this is what? This is what we call the junction box. And okay. this is simply the device that you need to be able to plug in the second uh, keyboard, mouse, and monitor. All right, so let me understand now. All I need to do is buy a keyboard, buy a mouse, have another monitor, and I can basically run a complete separate workstation from the same PC. Absolutely. All right, can we do this and show how this works? Because we're all set up here now. Uh, I'm running off your little buddy box and off your card. That's correct. You're running off the PC. That's correct. So what can we do? We can do things, you know, use applications at the same time? Well, you can use the same application I'm using to create and edit your own documents. All right, well, let, let's try this. You're in okay. Word. I'm. A, are we using the same copy of Word here? Yes, we are. Is this legal? Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> what, what we're really doing is we're using one CPU. Got it. Okay, so and it's one copy of Word. That's right. Yeah. We do not have two copies of Word. All right, well, let's Word. try this out. So you do some work, uh, and I'll do some work in okay. here. Okay. And so I can be doing my stuff, and you're doing your stuff. And it's it's moving pretty quick, huh? Oh, yes. Then, uh, you type better than I do, obviously. But, <laughs> but, I mean, I can do all the normal. Let's go into how about a spreadsheet. Um, well, okay, we can Same both. Same idea? Uh, I'll tell you what. Why don't you uh, work on the spreadsheet? I'll continue in Word. Oh, okay. And, so then, I... uh, and then I will then open my spreadsheet while you're in there and yeah. I'll start putting some numbers in. Okay. So we're, as you can see, there's no slowdown. We're both it's working amazing. totally independent yeah. of each other. All right, now let's get real important. I mean, okay. you keep on working. I want to play real, uh, I want to play free oh, solo you're gonna, there. We, yeah. we, we can do that, huh? Yeah, I see you're practicing your mouse technique over there. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is very, very cool. Yeah. Indeed. All right, now what about more complicated things? Suppose, uh, I want to access a file that you're in the middle of working on. Does the thing crash at that point? Uh, well, okay. I do have a file open now. If you'll go into okay, Word. Okay, so let me go back to Word over here and get rid of this guy for a minute. Okay. I can get into Word. Okay, so I'll go open. Now, what's the file you're working on? Uh, 
This I'm guy right up here? on that guy right there. All right, there, so yes. I say, I want to open that file. Right. Whoops. Well, it says he's using it. Big deal. Do I want to make a copy? And I can just go in here and say, now I can grab a copy of the same file. Wow. There you go. And I've got it. If this is a form letter and you want to edit it with a, a different name and address, you can edit a copy and save, save it as your own file. What about compli a little more complicated things? Say, well, let's say printing, for example. We're using one printer here. You go to print a job. You're in your room. I'm in my room. I go to print a job. What happens with the printer? Well, basically what our software does is it takes the print jobs and it puts them in what we call a print spool. All right, so you will spool them. Oh, yes. Okay. And they'll print first come, first serve. <clears throat> now, what happens if I'm in a big database like a contact manager or something uh, and I'm trying to access information while you're trying to access information? Can you deal with that? Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, we do have a couple of uh, programs that we support. And uh, in that situation, you can be creating a, a, a new contact. I can be looking up a phone number while somebody else, if we were to have two buddy cards in here, somebody uh -huh. else could even be uh, scheduling an appointment. Are you, you have, can you actually launch ACT and, and show that to us? I, I do have, have ACT there. open on my station over here. Okay. And uh, this So is again, an, you could be example. accessing that database. I could be doing, we can be sharing the database at the same time also. Exactly. And if I happen to be editing, uh, a particular contact, you can look at that contact while I'm okay. editing it in order to get it. Now, what about the it. ISP stuff? You just saw me with the Netgear stuff. We were both surfing different websites at the same time. Can I do that using the buddy system? Yes, virtually anything that's installed on the computer can be shared simultaneously and independently. So if you've got a modem that's dialed up to the mm -hmm. ISP, you're sharing the one modem, the one phone line, the one ISP connection, both of you, simultaneous yeah. and completely independent. How many, how many uh, clients can I have on this network here with your buddies? Uh, you can put as many as four cards in a computer. As long as I've got the PCI slots, That's I just correct. line them up. That's the limit. And what's this thing cost? Uh, you know, standard retail price is approximately $150. $150, $150, and I've got a second computer. That's correct. Very cool, Bill. Thank you very much. Coming up next, Apple's wireless airport network and what may be the future of home networking, the residential gateway. We'll be right back. There are limits to what you can do with a wired home network, so another approach to setting up your home or small office network is a wireless system like the new Airport from Apple, and this is Dave Klensky of Apple who's going to show us Airport. Uh, let's talk about the hardware setup first of all, and if I can grab this guy over here, this is what you call the Airport Base Station. So tell us what this thing is doing. Sure, the Base Station, it's similar to the Base Station of a cordless telephone. A flying telephone. saucer kind of thing, right? Exactly. Very cool. You, uh, you plug it into the wall, it, uh, it ties into your internet connection. Maybe we can show the, the ports in the back here. You have an integrated 56K modem port here. You also have a 10 base D Ethernet jack. So if you have high bandwidth to the mm -hmm. home or an Ethernet network, you just plug your cable into that. Okay, so and we're taking our power. DSL line through the Ethernet connection right now. That's what we're doing today. Okay, but I could be using that guy. And this is power in here. Right. And a couple little sort of tally LEDs here. This tells going. you what's going on. So the center LED, of course, tells you it's on and gotcha. this shows you the, the traffic. That so this is like a, a cordless phone base station. Just like a cordless phone. It's telephone. going to be transmitting to this, you know, the little things that are out there. Uh, all right, so let's put this aside for just a moment. Let's go to the next step now. This is my iBook. Again, no, no wires here, right? No wires, Stuart. Okay, now let's talk about how this thing works. First of all, I assume you have to put some sort of card or something in the computer well, to right. There's an airport that. card. You flip up the keyboard. Let's hold this, this up is, so everybody can see This is a that. customer installable card. That's the card so you right can there. Just plug it right in here. Okay, and that's it. And that's it. Uh, now suppose I don't have an iBook. I mean, suppose other Macs. Do they have the same kind of card, same kind of slot. Yeah, the iMac and the Power Mac G4 also have an airport card slot. Okay, well. so, th so this doesn't only work on, on the iBook. No, it works on uh, on actually all the Apple. But the computers. card's the same whether it's a big machine or an iBook. That's correct, the same card. Okay, so let me, I'll let you put that uh, back in. We Please. also have integrated antennas. Yeah, that's the next question. How is this receiving the signal from the base station? Right, so you notice up here, actually in the case, we have two antennas. So there's nothing to lose or break so off. So another little guy up here that's going to break nope. off as I travel. Uh, and is this standard in any iBook? If I buy an iBook, it's sort of airport ready? All iBook computers are airport ready. All you need to do is add the card. All right, what kinds of speeds are we talking about in terms of uh, transmission rate from the base station over here to, to the iBook? The wireless transmission speed is up to 11 megabits per second. So it's Ethernet speeds without the Ethernet cable. Huh. All right, show us some of the performance now. Uh, so we have a DSL connection here. This should be pretty good then if uh, we can take that speed from the airport into the, from the base station into the iBook. I'm going to show you web browsing, which is what many of our customers right. do. So we're at the apple.com All right, so let, let me just uh, you know, make sure everybody sees what's going on here. So here's our base station, wirelessly sending information over here to the iBook, and we're browsing 
We're browsing the internet, Stuart. Sitting at a bar somewhere. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to go to my favorite page, which is the airport page at <laughs> Apple.com. Your product, all right? Exactly. So you see uh, you see how quickly the airport page downloaded uh, wirelessly and off through the internet. All right. To show the speed, can you pull up some streaming video or something to see really how good the performance of this would be? Sure. I'm going to launch QuickTime, and we have BBC. This is a live BBC feed, wireless. And that is pretty cool. No wires here. The iBook is untethered. Still no wires. Still. Yeah. And uh, and that, that's, that's almost television. That is pretty darn good. All right, let me ask you a couple other questions. When I'm going wireless, this is cool if I'm watching TV. Suppose I'm doing work. I'm concerned about security. How about the guy with his iBook and his antenna sitting over here? Can he be watching the same stuff that's coming off my base station? With Airport, we have a couple forms of security. The first is that you can actually set a password for your base station. So a customer that, or so somebody that wants to log on to your base station needs to know your password. If you don't give them their okay, your password, so, so they can't log in. That way. We also, the wireless data stream is also encrypted to make sure that your data remains secure. All right, what about issues of interference? Is my, you know, garage door going to go up when I turn this thing on or, or is this going to get, you know, my cell phone going to interfere with this thing or somebody else's device interfere with this? The technology we use is very resistant to interference. However, if there might be something in the area, you can tell by looking at the signal quality meter on your control strip. And so that will allow you to move your computer in case there is something that might be in your way yeah. to, to have a better signal. Now, can I share this connection? Suppose I have two iBooks or two Macs or three Macs or something and one airport based. That's one of the great things about airport, especially if you have a high bandwidth line into, the, into your home. You can take an iMac, an iBook, or a G4, and I'll share the same internet connection. Uh, and what's the performance in that case? It's still 11 megabit per second wireless data yeah. rate, and then whatever comes into the house, you just share that bandwidth. All right, finally, Dave, installing and setting up any kind of network, let alone a wireless network, is usually a nightmare. What is it like to have to put this thing together? Can a normal guy do this? Well, you saw how easy the card installed, and yeah. that's the first one. I mean, from the software. We also view. have a setup assistant that you walk through to set up the computer. Now, as customers give us feedback on things they'd like to see done better, we'll certainly be rolling the software to add some improvements, just like we did with USB and FireWire, because that's what people expect from Apple. They really expect the ease yeah. of use. It's very cool. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. All right, well, with computer chips showing up in virtually every home appliance, from your washing machine to your VCR to your telephone, you may want to network more than just your computers. And wouldn't it be nice to be able to control your home network from a remote location via the Internet? Well, that is the idea behind something called the Residential Gateway. And this is Brian Hinman, who is the founder of TwoWire. And let me ask you, is this, this is this the residential gateway? This, this is thing the here? residential gateway that we call Home Portal. And this is a DSL residential gateway. Okay. And this essentially terminates the fat pipe that comes into the house and then creates a network in the house for multiple PCs and other devices. All right, so your two-wire device depends on DSL. That's, that's the basic. We believe that that's going to be one of the predominant ways people are going to be getting high-speed access. All right, so this is essentially a network router, I mean, in computer in terms. In business terms, yeah. we call this a router. For consumers, we think the notion of calling it a residential gateway is sure. probably more. And can, let me just sort of see if we can get a shot of the ports here and just explain, Brian, what's going in and out of here. Well, the essence of this is to make it as easy as possible for consumers to install. So we have, of course, power to uh, okay. power the, the device. The only jack that really needs to be connected is this line jack which not only then brings in the DSL and terminates it into this residential gateway, but then serves up okay. a home phone line networking based network within the house so that every jack then within the house becomes live with data networking. All right, so this is telephone wire based network throughout your house. That's correct. So DSL comes in, goes to your, your router, your two wire residential gateway here. Correct. And then gets distributed through the phone wires in your house. Correct. What are these other ports over here then? Alternatively, there's other ways of attaching to the residential gateway. Mm -hmm. While we believe that the home phone line networking is going to be a very popular way to connect devices, there's certainly going to be other ways that you'd like to connect devices to the residential gateway. All right, this depends totally on having DSL. Uh, a lot of people say, well, geez, I don't have DSL. How do I get it? How do people find out about what, whether they can get DSL? That's one of the first problems we wanted to solve, because many people assume that they cannot get DSL or that their only alternative might be their phone company. Right. And many people are surprised to find out how many alternatives they really right. do You have. actually have a utility, don't you? Uh, this is on your website? Yes, we do at uh, www.2wire.com. We have kind of a lookup cool. service, and uh, it's a pretty comprehensive service. So I put service. my address in. And it gives you a full what list of have. what your choices are. One of the first things we tell you is where your central office is. Most people don't even realize and where And how far away is. you are from it, because that may depend on and the that, service you And 
that's yeah. important because ADSL, which is going to be the predominant consumer technology, only works to 15,000 All right, let me feet. ask you that. When you show the different people are all, like, always asking me, what is the difference between ADSL and SDSL and IDSL? Go through those, those choices. Okay. For consumers, we believe that the predominant market is going to be with the ADSL technology. That's, That's asymmetrical digital subscriber loop. That it. means that you get a lot of bandwidth downstream, less bandwidth upstream. Okay, SDSL? Is symmetrical DSL. That's the technology that today is the most popular for business applications. Okay, and IDSL? IDSL is like ISDN. Okay, it's the slower okay. speed, the 144 stuff. And then what is our ADSL? That's an earlier version of ADSL, rate adaptive DSL. Okay. So if we're at home, we're talking about ADSL. ADSL right now, is going to be where most of the market is. All right, now I've got this all set up. What is the point? What can I do now, now that I've got my two wire DSL network going in my house? And once you have it connected, we believe that more and more you're going to have people with <laughs> multiple PCs within the house. And so we believe it doesn't make sense long term to just have a DSL modem associated with the PC in the home office. The kids are going to have their PC upstairs. And unlike the V.34, V90 mm -hmm. days, this is an always on connection we're right, talking about. Right, right. So it raises the problem of how do we share that always on high speed connection with multiple PCs. All right, so we share with multiple PCs, but when we can do that with a lot of systems, you're talking about going beyond just the PCs, right? I mean, you can manage, I assume, your, your phone system because you're using the phone wires here. That's correct. So we believe that the role of a residential gateway will evolve from initially supporting a couple of PCs, the kids' PC, mm -hmm. the home office, to including, uh, in essence, a phone system within the house. Now, do you have software in here where I can actually manage my phone system as if I had a PBX system or Yes, something? we do, as a matter of fact, and I'll show you what our box looks like from the perspective inside the house looking at the residential gateway. You manage it from a browser. So this shows you, All right, for so example, again, what we're, it looks we're, like. This is a browser now. This is remote control. I could be on this browser from anywhere then looking at what my home network is doing. And this, this is what it looks like from the inside looking at the box. We also, on a password protected basis, would allow you from okay, the office, for example, to access your files. All right, so we're in a PC. browser. This is my network right now. I've got my four PCs. What about telephones if I want to manage the phones in my house? So the phones, we also believe will have adapters for the phones. Now, what is, what is this thing over network. here, for example? This one actually is a version of a dongle, if you will, that, <laughs> that is a, a filter for DSL only. But there are other versions that would allow a telephone to adapt itself and become a network-based device. All right, so I could network. plug this into a phone jack. Uh, you know, over here anywhere in my house, and this is, then becomes part of the network. To then it takes device. the phone device and puts it onto the network like a data gotcha. device, so it has a communication digitally back to this residential gateway. All right, so what can I do with these phones here? I mean, I can manage the way they ring or, or what? So a couple of things that, that consumers have said they're very interested in as far as telephony functionality is concerned. One is advanced uh, call screening, so the ability to not have the phones ring at 10 o'clock at night, have it just go to voice. And manage that through my manage two that from this portal. Our final issue, we have DSL, we're going to get to audio and video and all this stuff. Can I now manage and distribute those kinds of signals to my stereo, to my television set, etc.? Well, that's, that's what we believe, is that the same DSL connection now can provide entertainment to the home, not only to the PC device, but also to other internet appliances that would be attached to the home network, either over the phone line networking yeah. or wireless. And what does a two-wire system cost, Brian? The two-hour system, it depends on what features, but it's between uh, $399 and $599, although I should point out that because it's so closely associated with the installation of the DSL service and the ISP service that a number of the service providers will be subsidizing. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, that's our look at home networks. I'll be back in just a moment with my pick of the week, a rather unique PC peripheral. Don't go away. Now for my pick of the week. You don't tend to think of Intel as a playful company. They make chips and integrated circuits and all that boring stuff. But there is actually a play division at Intel that develops playthings, toys. And they have come up with a great high-tech toy. You can't really call this a toy. It's technically, I guess, a computer peripheral. It plugs into a USB port, but it is a microscope. This is it over here. It is the QX3 computer microscope. So instead of having to squint into a little eyepiece fiddling around with a reflecting mirror, Having to change batteries in that little light gizmo, you can now look at stunning magnifications of nature on your computer screen. This is basically a digital camera hooked up to a microscope that enables you to manipulate the magnified images with a variety of software tools that come with the QX3. So for example, I can capture movement or time lapse sequences and save them as a video file. I can save and organize all my slide views and put together a slideshow. And of course, I can print whatever I can see. The QX3 offers three lenses, which give you from 10 times to 200 times magnification. And since this is basically just a digital camera, I can take it out of the base and look at things that won't fit in a slide, like the skin on my fingers or the fleas on my dog. 
For school projects, the QX3 is great because now kids can share microscopic views by sending them as email attachments to classmates. And like any good microscope kit, the QX3 comes with little things on slides like how slice and insect parts, etc. The QX3 computer microscope was developed in association with Mattel. Retail price, $99. That's it for this edition of Computer Chronicles. Thanks for joining us. Please check out the web radio show I do weekly. Just click on the talk show link on our homepage. Thanks for joining us again. We'll see you here next time. The Computer Chronicles is brought to you by rondiamond.com, the oldies site on the Internet. Music and memories from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, not just another jukebox. Additional support comes from the law offices of Ivan Hoffman, lawyering with integrity for internet law, copyright, trademark, and other intellectual property law. And by TechWeb for up-to-the-minute technology news. To purchase a videotape copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-310-7850. Please specify the show number and the topic. 